In Texas, we have gender neutral laws. And so while people think that the mother has an advantage, it's not generally an advantage based on gender. It's an advantage based on who has been the primary caretaker for the child in the past. So the judge is really going to look hard at who's the one that puts the child to bed at night, um, make sure that the child has their medicine, who makes sure that the doctor knows what's going on with the child's medical history, make sure that the homework gets done. That's the parent who would be the primary parent for a custody situation. When it comes to quality time with the children, we let the client be the guide to tell us what it is that they think they need for their child. And oftentimes we can make suggestions, but we have to be sensitive to what your personality is and what you feel is in the best interest of your child. When both parents want full custody, you really have to talk it out in mediation and try to look at what is in the best interest of the child, not what the parent wants and needs, but what does the child want and need. And then you look at whether it's practical in the situation as far as the amount of distance that the parents live from each other. Sometimes the parents will say, we want full custody, but then they have a very unstable job situation and it's just not practical. In Texas, we presume that every family should have a joint managing conservator, but joint managing conservatorship can look very different in some families than others. And what we really look at are the rights and the duties of the parent. Are we going to share the rights and the duties to make decisions regarding education and medical decisions? Or are we going to have one person with the exclusive right or one person who makes the decision but has to consult with the other parent first? And so we may have a sole managing conservatorship if there's abuse or if we need supervised visitation, but most cases are going to end up with a joint managing conservatorship. And the only question is, what does that look like for you? In most situations, the parent who has custody is going to be the one who receives child support. That's the traditional way. But we have had cases where the parent who has custody is also the highest income earner. And there have been situations where they've said, I don't need child support from the other side. Or the parent who does not have custody is unemployed and really can't afford to pay child support at that time. And so we have to look at the whole situation and there are times when we will offset child support, look at how much um, each parent makes, and if one parent was to pay child support to the other, then look at what the difference would be, and the one who would be paying the most child support just pays the difference to the other parent. So there's a lot of different scenarios. Different states do it differently. In Texas, we have guideline child support, but it doesn't. you don't have to follow the guidelines we can overcome the presumption of guideline support if we have the right facts. Child support is not meant to be punitive and a lot of times parents use it that way um, if they don't have a good relationship. They really need to focus on the needs of the child and if a child needs more than standard child support then they need to be flexible in that situation and if the child doesn't need um, all the money that the child support would give them, you might set up a 529 plan or some kind of college savings plan to save up for the child's college because child support ends when they turn 18 and have graduated from high school. But most parents want their children to go to college. So if, if you don't need that money right now for food, clothing, and shelter, it's a good idea to put that money aside for college. When it comes to changing your child custody orders, oftentimes you don't have to get a new order if you can reach an agreement. The courts want you to be flexible and be able to reach an agreement between the parties without having to run down and get a new court order every time you're changing the visitation plan, for instance. However, when it comes to the money issues, you need to have a new court order. You can't just agree between the two of you the child support's going to be more or less than what the court order says. If you want to have a lower child support, you have to go get a new court order, or the attorney general may be filing a lawsuit to put the 
person who's supposed to be paying child support in jail because they didn't pay enough. If your child support or your child visitation plan is not being followed, it's a good idea to consult with your attorney. Make sure first of all that the order is written in such a way that it can be enforced. Make sure that it says what you think it says and then get an attorney who can show you what all your different options are for enforcement. I've represented people in many different types of child custody situations. I've represented children who are in foster care and their parents' rights are terminated. I've represented the parents who are fighting the Child Protective Services to keep their parental rights. I represented women who were unfortunately murdered because of child custody matters. And I have represented women whose husbands needed a court order for them to get mental illness evaluation and treatment before they could visit with their children. I have seen cases where the father has killed himself before the case was over and cases where unfortunately my client was killed before the case was over. So I've seen a lot of tragedy. I've seen a lot of cases where the parents are able to work out their issues and um, sometimes we have employed child custody evaluators who help the parents learn how to co-parent and make them realize what it means to put the children first. I believe that people hire my firm to be their representation because we listen to people and they come in here they feel comfortable knowing that they are going to be heard and they're not just a number. My current and past clients would say that this firm really cares about them and that we really take care of the details so that uh, everything is put into their decree that needs to be in there or into their order that needs to be there. We believe client communication is very important. Every time that we hear something from opposing counsel or from the other party, we will notify the client about what's going on in their case. We return phone calls that day or the very next day, and we check our emails several times a day. We're a small firm, and the advantage of working with a small firm is that you get to know all of the staff of the firm, and all of the staff of the firm gets to know you. My law firm is different from other firms because we really make a point to make sure that everybody on staff knows what's going on with all the cases. We sit down together and go over all the cases together as a staff, and we um, pray for our clients, and we pray with our clients. If you need a new court order for a modification or an enforcement or if the whole issue is whether or not the uh, father is really the father and you're establishing paternity for the first time. Those issues require us to get into your family history, to know names, social security numbers, ages, birth dates. We keep all that information confidential. But in your initial consultation, expect us to ask a lot of personal questions and just realize that the things you tell us, we do keep confidential. 